Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of the mammalian gas exchange system. You should then be able to describe how alveoli are adapted for efficient gas exchange. In the last video we looked at the gas exchange system in bony fish. Because fish have a low surface area to volume ratio and a high oxygen demand, their gills have evolved to maximise the diffusion of gases. Now just like fish, mammals also have a low surface area to volume ratio. Mammals are also very active animals, but unlike fish, mammals maintain a constant body temperature, and this requires an increased rate of aerobic respiration. So for these reasons, mammals have an extremely high oxygen demand. Mammals get their oxygen from the air via their lungs. I'm showing you the structure of the human breathing system here. Humans have two lungs, which are found in the thorax or chest cavity. The lungs are protected by the ribs. The ribs also play a role in breathing, along with the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. And we'll be looking at how humans breathe in the next video. When humans breathe through their nose, air passes through the nasal cavity. Hairs in the nasal cavity trap dust particles and pathogens. The nasal cavity also warms and moistens the air before it enters the lungs. The air then makes its way down a wide tube called the trachea. Now the trachea has two key adaptations which you need to learn. Firstly, the walls of the trachea contain cartilage, which is a firm but flexible material. The cartilage prevents the walls of the trachea from collapsing when we inhale. This diagram shows a view of the trachea looking down towards the lungs. As you can see, the trachea is very close to the esophagus, which is the tube carrying food to the stomach. Now you'll notice that the cartilage in the trachea forms a C shape, rather than forming complete rings. The absence of cartilage in the region near the esophagus allows food to pass down the esophagus easily. The second adaptation of the trachea is that the walls are lined with ciliated epithelia and goblet cells. I'm showing you the cells lining the walls of the trachea here. Goblet cells secrete mucus, which traps dust particles and pathogens. The ciliated epithelial cells have cilia extending from the cell membrane, and the beating of the cilia moves the mucus to the throat. The mucus is then swallowed, and the dust and pathogens are digested by the stomach enzymes. Going back to our diagram of the lungs, we can see that the trachea divides into two bronchi. Each bronchus carries air into one of the lungs. Just like the trachea, the bronchi contain cartilage, ciliated epithelia and goblet cells. Each bronchus now splits, forming progressively narrower airways called bronchioles. The walls of larger bronchioles are supported by cartilage. They also contain smooth muscle. When the smooth muscle relaxes, the bronchioles widen, allowing more air to pass into the deeper parts of the lungs. Deep in the lungs, the bronchioles are extremely narrow. These bronchioles now lead into air sacs called alveoli. Alveoli are the sites of gas exchange, and there are hundreds of millions of alveoli in the lungs. The internal walls of the alveoli are covered with a thin layer of moisture. I'm showing you a close-up of alveoli here. The alveoli are covered with extensive blood capillaries. Oxygen in the air of the alveoli dissolves in the moisture on the inside of the alveolar wall. The oxygen then diffuses into the red blood cells, where it combines with haemoglobin. Carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveolar airspace. Between the alveoli are elastic fibres, which stretch and recoil during breathing. As we've seen, alveoli are where gases diffuse in and out of the blood you need to be able to describe how alveoli are adapted to maximise the rate of diffusion. As I said before, there are hundreds of millions of alveoli, and these provide a massive surface area for the diffusion of gases. I'm showing you here a close-up of an alveolus and a blood capillary. As you can see, both the wall of the alveolus and the wall of the capillary are only one cell thick. So this means that there's a very short diffusion distance between the air in the alveoli and the red blood cells in the capillary. The narrow diameter of the capillary means that the red blood cells are close to the capillary wall, and again this minimises the diffusion distance. Now the extensive capillary network means that once oxygen diffuses into the blood, it's rapidly carried away from the alveoli. This ensures that there's always a steep concentration gradient for oxygen, Carbon dioxide also has a steep concentration gradient, 
as more is continually brought to the alveoli in the bloodstream. These concentration gradients are also maintained by breathing, which brings fresh air into the alveoli. This ensures that there's always a high concentration of oxygen in the alveolar air, as well as a low concentration of carbon dioxide. And again, this helps to ensure a rapid rate of diffusion of these gases. In the next video, we look at how breathing takes place. Thank you.